Lucanidipine, like amlodipine, is used to lower blood pressure, but has been shown to have fewer side effects. It's the medicine I switch my patients to when they complain of foot or leg swelling after they start taking amlodipine. In this video, I will explain everything you need to know about this medicine, especially what it does to the body and about its specific side effects. I will also answer some commonly asked questions in my clinic, such as what's the difference between amlodipine and lecanidipine, and are there other similar medicines to lower blood pressure? These are really important questions that you should be fully informed about when making a decision about taking your medication. So let's get started with what is lecanidipine. It's a calcium channel blocker medicine used to treat high blood pressure. So it helps to prevent heart disease, heart attacks and strokes. So how does it work? Like other calcium channel blockers, it works by blocking calcium going into muscles in the heart and blood vessels. Muscles need calcium to contract, so when you block the calcium, it makes the muscle cells relax and widen. This lowers your blood pressure and makes it easier for your heart to pump blood around your body. So who may not be able to take lecanidipine? It's not suitable for some people, so to make sure it's safe for you, tell your doctor if you have ever had an allergic reaction to lecanidipine or any other medicine. If you are trying to get pregnant, are already pregnant or you're breastfeeding. If you have liver or kidney disease, or if you have heart disease or have had a recent heart attack. So how and when do you take lecanidipine? It comes as 10 milligrams and 20 milligram tablets and is usually taken once a day. You can take it at any time of day, but try to make sure it's around the same time every day. Most people take lecanidipine in the morning. It's best to take it at least 15 minutes before a meal and swallow the tablets whole with a drink of water. If your dose is not working well enough at 10 milligrams, you may need to increase your dose to 20 milligrams once a day. Is there any food or drink you need to avoid? Don't eat grapefruit or drink grapefruit juice. This is because grapefruit can increase the amount of lecanidipine in your body and cause side effects. So what are the common side effects? Headaches, reddening of your face, neck or chest called flushing or flashing, a fast pounding or irregular heartbeat called palpitations, swollen ankles called edema, and some people can get stomach problems, feel tired or dizzy, and get muscle pain or pee a lot. So what are the serious side effects? If you get chest pain that does not stop after a few minutes or is new or worse if you already have angina, chest pain is a possible sign of a heart attack and needs to be checked out as soon as possible. And in rare cases, it's possible to have a serious allergic reaction to lecanidipine. These are not all the side effects. For a full list, see the leaflet inside your medicines packet. Now, what are the cautions with other medicines? If you take medicines that lower blood pressure at the same time as lecanidipine, the combination can sometimes lower your blood pressure too much. This may make you feel dizzy or faint. And if this keeps happening to you, tell your doctor as your doses may need to be changed. Some medicines can affect the way lecanidipine works, and lecanidipine can also affect the way that some other medicines work. So tell your doctor or pharmacist if you're taking aminophilin or theophylline, itraconazole, ketoconazole or voriconazole, erythromycin or clarithromycin, heart medicines such as digoxin, amiodarone, Sotolol or metoprolol. Antiviral medicines to treat HIV. Rifampicin, a medicine to treat tuberculosis. Carbamazepine, phenytoin, phenobarbital or primidone. Cyclosporin, a medicine to reduce immune reactions. So now I'm going to answer one of the most frequently asked questions in my clinic. 
What's the difference between amlodipine and lecanidipine? The main difference with these two medications is that lecanidipine is associated with considerably lower incidence of side effects than amlodipine, especially when it comes to foot and leg swelling, and there are many studies to back this up. And do remember that there are also many studies that show that they both work equally as effective as each other in reducing blood pressure. So I would suggest that if you are getting side effects with amlodipine, discuss this with your healthcare provider. The second question is whether there are similar medicines to lecanidipine. There are several other calcium channel blockers that lower blood pressure in the same way. These include nifedipine, philodipine, lecadipine, and as discussed earlier, amlodipine, which I do talk about in more detail in my other video that I will leave a link for in the description box. There are also two other calcium channel blockers, diltiazem and verapamil, that work slightly differently to lower blood pressure. There are also lots of other types of medicines to lower your blood pressure. These medicines work in different ways from calcium channel blockers and include ACE inhibitors like ramipril and lisinopril, angiotensin receptor blockers like candisartan or losartan, beta blockers like bisoprolol or metoprolol, tablets that make you pee more called diuretics like ferrucimide or spironolactone, or alpha blockers like doxazosin. If you cannot take lecanotapine or other calcium channel blockers because of side effects, you may be able to switch to another blood pressure lowering medicine that I have just mentioned above. Now your doctor will advise which one is best for you depending on your age, ethnicity and medical history. Now I do hope you enjoyed this video and please share your thoughts or experiences with the lecanidipine in the comments sections below. And you can also watch my other videos on how to lower blood pressure naturally or the playlist. Thank you for watching.